you're into manga and like magical adventures, then this is a pretty good video for you. Even if you're like me and despise the magic girl genre, which this kind of lends to, which at Atelier is actually something special, and that's kind of weird coming from me. Today we're going to be jumping into this enchanting series, way, and it's a good time for it too, because the anime adaptation was just announced, and a trailer is on Crunchyroll's YouTube channel. I'm going to give my review on the first few chapters of the manga, so you can decide if it's for you or not. I'll talk about its captivating story, its unique characters, and the magical elements which makes the story, in my opinion, a must read. But before we get started, make sure to hit the subscribe button and ring the bell icon. Witch Out Atelier is a fantasy manga series created by the incredibly talented Kamio Shirohama, and so far, collectively, it is 13 volume as of February 2024. The series has not only captured the reader's hearts and gained critical acclaim, winning prestigious awards. Kamiyo Shimurama outdoes herself with her breathtaking artwork and enchanting narratives. Get it? Enchanting? I did that joke too soon again. Her distinctive art style displays the imaginative world building and forces your investment. The series follows a story of Coco, a young girl whose dream is to become a witch. In this world, you can only become a witch when you're born. It's either you have it or you don't, or so it would seem. Isn't the case. In this world, anyone can use magic, which itself is a closely guarded secret, known only by the witches of the world. Coco's journey begins as she witnesses a mysterious witch named Kifi casting a spell in her mother's tailor shop. Coco's curiosity leads her to use a forbidden spell book in an attempt to replicate what she saw. Coco casts a spell that turns her mother into stone. This tragic accident sets her on her path to becoming an apprentice of Feely, who takes her and promises to help her not only find her way as a witch, but to undo the damage that she has caused and help her grow alongside her magic. Kifri is a reclusive witch. He becomes Coco's mentor and guide. However, Kifri has his own mysterious plot points, particularly with a group of witches known as the Brimmed Caps, leaving his character with a level of unknown mystery and questionable motives behind his seemingly kind actions. Joining Coco on her journey are three other apprentices. Akata is a skilled and brilliant, but yet cold, competitive witch in training. She comes across mainly as a jealous child, pointing Coco in directions that are dangerous and thus playing on Coco's insecurity Basically, she's the classic kid bully. Talita is a cheerful and optimistic girl who <laughs> basically just has dreams of becoming a witch who can use her magic to bring happiness to others. Richie, on the other hand, is more reserved. That's all I can say without spoiling too much. Each character brings their own unique personality and skill to the story, making the dynamic between them engaging and relatable. This group is nothing special, at least narratively speaking. From what I have read, it's just the same formula that we've seen time and time again. A group of unlikely friends that have clashing character traits. This style of structure is seen a lot for a reason, because it's great. It's a great platform to explore a character within the conflict of the group. This builds for natural character growth, showing us a difference in the viewpoints of every single character during ongoing situations. This not only builds a dynamic between the characters, but also develops them, and we get to discover what they're actually like. What sets this story apart is the unique approach to magic. In the world, the magic is performed by drawing intricate runes with special ink, making it accessible to anyone with the knowledge of how to draw them and how to create the ink. This concept somewhat challenges the traditional notion of certain individuals that are born into the ability to use magic. At first, I was thinking it was very similar to full metal alchemist power system and how they must draw a transmutation circle in order to use the power of alchemy and these restrictions will allow for creative uses of said system that will either be visually interesting or something that develops its own power system by revealing new runes or ways to exploit the system hopefully in a pre-established way because i hate when people randomly power up for seemingly no reason the series' success is evident, not only in its storytelling and artwork, but also in its pure popularity, with over 5.1 million copies in circulation as of July 2024. And you can help me hit 1.5 million subs. This is my graph. This is how many people are actually subscribed watching my stuff. It's kind of, it's kind of depressing. And then you can enjoy more of my crappy shirts. 
As I said, there is even more excitement for fans of this story. The anime's television series adaptation by Bug Films is set to premiere in 2025, bringing this magical world to life on screen. As we've seen, this story is a series that combines beautiful artistry with a rich magical narrative. It's a story that dreams about determination and the enchanting world of magic. This series promises to captivate and inspire you, in some capacity at least. So what are you waiting for? Dive into this magical journey and join Coco on her journey to become a witch. Let me know in the comments what you thought, and I probably will cover more of this series. As I said, I'm only a few chapters into the manga. I just wanted to see how people thought about it, and if I'm the only one who's reading it right now. And do you think it's really worth reading all of it? I think it's good so far, so unless something terrible happens later on, then I'm going to read it all.